Oh, hi there, and hello. I'm Makira Tours, and you're watching This Is My Channel. Today, we're gonna make some prom dresses. Now, maybe prom or some other fancy event is coming up, and you don't have a dress to wear. That leads me to believe you're a very ill-prepared person, quite irresponsible. Then again, maybe you're just waiting for the solution to your problem to show up. Your problem being that you can't find an affordable, sustainable option for a prom dress. Now, I wanna make sure I mention that if you need a quick, sustainable, affordable option, but you're not into sewing at all, thrifting is a great option. But, Michaela, my local thrift store only has dresses from the 80s. Well, my name isn't Michaela, but what if it is though. I Anyway, thrifting is a great- but I can't go to a thrift store. I can't even leave my house. I'm sorry. Agoraphobia is no joke, and if you struggle- Oh, I'm not afraid to leave the house. I'm just stuck here on this leash. Who put you on a leash? I did. Of course. Well, you need to check out Thread Up. It's the largest online thrift store with thousands of adorable pieces to choose from. Why should I thrift when I can just get a new dress online? Well, for one, April is Earth Month. I've never been to Earth. What's it like? Oh, it's a great planet, but we do go through new clothes a little bit too quickly. Did you know buying one used item as opposed to new saves enough energy to power a selfie ring light for 142 days? Oh, I don't use a ring light. Okay, but are the clothes even cute? Oh, yeah. The dress I'm wearing right now is actually from ThreadUp. It's Zara brand, and it was originally $46, but I got it for $19.99. So if you get a dress like this and you go to a party, you'll be partying like it's $19.99. It's a reference. You'd have to live on Earth to get it. Now, they have tons of adorable casual clothes, but if you're looking for something formal, maybe prom, boy, do they have you covered for that, too. This simple, elegant dress gives a look that says, I'm actually a 26-year-old that snuck into this prom. This is our dress at an estimated retail cost of $70, but I paid only $28. Listen, now, I know it's usually expected that prom informals to wear a long dress, but try something a little shorter and flashier to send a message, I'm more fun than anyone else here. This is our brand Disco Ball of a Delight was originally $70, but I paid only $30. While we're on the topic of unconventional outfits, Outfits, maybe you want to go to prom or some formal event, but you don't like wearing dresses. Well, guess what? You don't have to. There's no rule against not wearing a dress. Fun fact. Did you know that wearing pants to an event that involves dancing will ensure a more successful event? This is due to the fact that the pants wear will experience an increased sense of mobility, enabling them to express more superior dance moves, such as my personal favorite. Such things are done in the animal kingdom to attract a suitable mate. Originally $40, but I got it for $16. And these pants are by Tadashi, originally $190, but I got them for $25. If you're intent upon letting your classmates know that you're a little bit hippie or a little bit goth, this is our wraparound, originally $46, but I got it for $23. Should do the trick, especially when paired with your brother's wisdom tooth. And for a timeless old Hollywood look, try to find something like this ABS Evening by Alan Schwartz dress. Originally $89, but I only paid $19.19. So do yourself a favor and check out ThreadUp, and make sure you use my code Makara for 30% off the already low prices that they offer. Wow, I'll have to check them out. You should. I can tell you have nice taste. I like that shirt. Oh, thanks. I got it from ThreadUp, originally $56. $6, but I got it for 23 Wait, what? Thread up. But it's this online consignment thrift store that you totally have to check out. And when you do, use this code. That was my discount code. For an even greater discount on already crazily discounted deals. Well, that was fun. But what to do if you want to make your own prom dress? Well, I'm here to help. A few years ago, I made a video how to make your own prom dress. But if none of those dresses appeal to you, or perhaps they're too outdated now, I decided to throw in a few more options. I'm going to make three dresses total and try not to spend any more than one day on each dress. These dresses will vary in their level of difficulty, ranging from beginner to intermediate to more complicated than understanding why the U.S. doesn't make daylight savings time permanent. I'm going to start by sketching out four designs. One will be eliminated. And who's going to decide which one's going to get the axe? Well, that choice will be left up to my enchanting little Instagram followers. So just about nobody chose the dress that I thought would be the easiest to make, so that, well, that stinks. Once you've finished filming your intro, you can stop pretending you don't have an injury. I just feel like the wrist thing kind of ruins my outfit. I'm fishing for reassurance. <laughs> Thanks, okay, I'll keep it. Now we need to decide which dress is going to be made out of which fabric. Let's go shopping. I guess that's another that one. Oh, what's look at that? The people chose blue. Who would have thought? Now this dress is super simple to make. You're just going to need two yards of a fabric with some stretch to it, some elastic, and oh, wow, that's it. Fold your fabric in half long ways, then fold it in half again so that it is four layers deep. Draw and cut a somewhat curvy tube. The skirt portion should be as long as your legs, but from the waist up, you want to make everything twice as long. It should look just like that time you got your torso stuck in a taffy pole. Okay, so I know that I, know that I said I was going to try to get each of these dresses done in one day, but last night I only devoted about 10 minutes to this dress and then had to have dinner and then had to have Fortnite seven games or so and I had to watch a movie and then I went to bed. Like I guess I didn't have to watch the movie but I'm really glad I did because it was super interesting. What movie, you ask? Oh, you're actually asking me to get back to making the prom dresses? Okay, back to the dress. Ow! 
Now, now take that dress that's a little bit too wide and a lot too long, pin it right sides facing each other, then sew up each side. Before you try it on, hug your father warmly. Now try the darned thing on. From this first fitting, I garnered the information that the top of my dress was a little longer than I wanted it to be. So I took it off, laid it out, and gave my scissors a little snack. Meaning I cut a few inches off the top. If you didn't catch that, you should go back to humor school or something. Try it on again and pin the fabric at your hips. Be sure that from the pinned point to the bottom, it is long enough for you to wear high heels with. From that point up, just pinch and pin the fabric until you deduce how much needs to come off the sides. Now run it through the sewing machine once more. When trying it on this time, make sure you fold the top several inches or so inward. That way no raw edges are showing. Now that the whole thing fits your body snugly, shimmy it up again to that point where the fabric between your hips and the floor are the perfect length. Cut a piece of elastic as long as three tacos, or as long as from your hip to the area where your armpit hair starts growing. Now slice the dress open completely down the back and splay it out. Uh oh, she looks confused. But I promise it's not that complicated. You're going to stretch those poor little elastic pieces and pin them here and here. When you run those two lines through the sewing machine, make sure you pull on the elastic as you go. That way when you're finished, it'll snap right back into place, just like a Victoria's Secret model's body after giving birth. Repeat this step on the other side, sew up the back, and boom, you have a strapless dress. Now for pretty much the simplest dress you can possibly make, you can just stop here, but I'm going to add straps kind of close to the sides, and that will create a nearly cowl neck effect. Hope you're hungry, because it's time to make some spaghetti straps. After carefully positioning your fabric out of frame, cut out two strips of fabric as wide as a Snickers bar and as long as a Lake Erie walleye. Fold them in half, then sew all along the outside edge, creating a little tube. Pin a safety pin to one end, then send it through that tight little tunnel. This reminds me of a time an acquaintance told me he'd give me a dollar if I crawled through a sewage tunnel and emerged on the other side. It was pretty scary and got my clothes dirty, but that dollar was worth it. Then I lost the dollar later that day. Pin and sew the straps to the front, then either tie them behind your neck in halter style, or have someone else pin them where they hit in the back for you, unless you have abnormally long arms and then you can pin it yourself. Finally, to ensure that the drapes drooped how I wanted them to, I glued them in place. Now, whether or not I was finished was up to the Insta Goblins, for they bore the responsibility of dictating whether or not I'd add a leg slit. So I put the pole out there, and while I let it sit and ferment, I'm trying to work out. But my workouts just turned into me laughing at Gary and sound effects because <laughs> he associates this movement with the sound, huh? So when I'm doing deadlifts, <laughs> Now lastly, we must add the leg ventilation slit. One, because the people voted leg slit. Two, in the actual picture that people voted on. Guys, I did not edit that sound at all. That was Gary and is possessed. Okay, so we're just gonna see. I, I can't actually see anything because I've been looking at a ring light. So when I try to look away from the ring light, all I see is big blue UFO. That's either from the ring light or people from another dimension are trying to make contact with me. There. So now that we've exposed our kneecaps and turned under the raw edges with hem tape, it's time for our first grand re But wait! First we got- I forgot something. Pop quiz! What's the most important part of prom? Aside from everything, because every part of prom is the best. Pictures. And if you want your prom pictures to be next level fantastic, you're going to want to make a backdrop. Step one, locate a dad and have him hang some curtain rods for you. Step two, get a butt ton of fabric. Step three, get a crap load of flowers. Step 7, 12, and 13. Rip all the flowery heads off those innocent little bouquets and tie them several inches apart along a string or floral wire. Set the leaves aside and save them till October, just in case you and your brother want to reprise an old Halloween costume. You may find the process more enjoyable if you enlist the help of a bird and a male model. But if the male model can't make it because of the surge in gas prices, a Joe will work just as well. I hung my flowery garlands with sewing pins, which proved to be a terrible idea because Gary loves pins and he flew in in the night and unpinned half of them. And now it's really time to get ready for prom. Quick, I hear the limo now. I must say I'm pretty happy with how the dress turned out. It's very comfortable and I really like ruching in general because it covers food babies and who wants to bring a baby to prom, right? I mean, unless you're on MTV. Overall, I give this dress seven out of 10. Before moving on to our next gown, I wanna show you one quick variation you can do to this dress. Instead of making straps, just take a piece of fabric about the size of a cat, fold it in half, sew it into a tunnel, turn it right side out, and then sew it like so. Nice. Okay, time to move on to dress number two. Now we probably won't be getting the whole dress done today and we definitely won't be getting any of the dress done today because my hot tub is coming in. You know what you're thinking? Did you already have that inflatable hot tub? Yes, but it pooped out. It only gets like kind of warm now. So I'm trying to find someone to give it away to for free that will use it as a birthing tub. And I found myself a couple weeks ago with a really sore back, really sore muscles. And I was looking through Airbnbs in my own town, trying to find one with a hot tub. And they're like a hundred dollars a night. And I'm like, yeah. I can swing that. And I was like, wait, 
That's a little ridiculous. So I drove down to the hot tub store and ordered a hot tub, punctured my wrist with some tweezers. That got infected. I had to get a tetanus shot. I had some really bad reactions to the tetanus shot. I blacked out like three times the next day. Also, I couldn't use that hand for like a week. I had to have other people put my hair up in ponytails and I had to have my dad forge checks for me. Squiggle, squiggle, yes. None of this is relevant. Why is this in the video? Am I filming at all? Well, probably because I think I look cute today or something. Can I spray with it? Okay, now that you see my outfit, let's skip to the day that I actually make the dress. I've taken out my Invisalign and this is the album. So now that this dress is finished, we shall move on to either this one or this one. But the fabric has not come in for this one yet. So this one, au revoir. In English, that means au revoir. Or to translate it into Australian, croc, I'm being attacked by a crocodile. Now this dress will either be done in a bold red satin or this gorgeous sparkly silver style, but I'm not sure which one I want. So you know what that means. To the polls, or as they would say in France, Viva Revolution! The people chose silver, you know, I think I'm happy with their choice. I was kind of leaning towards the silver, but I wasn't positive, so. Now that's what I call a triple win. I got what I want, my followers got what they want, and no one accused anyone of being manipulative. To start this dress, I once again recommend you get a stretchy fabric. Sew it into a giant rectangle to make it easier to fit to yourself if you live alone, but if you're going to prom, I'm guessing you don't live alone. Are high school aged people allowed to live alone? Although it's probably silly of me to assume that you're actually high school age intending to make one of these dresses for prom. In reality, you're probably just Zendaya looking for her next red Carpet look. So anyway, as I was saying, you're gonna wanna pin this to fit you perfectly, Zendaya. Then trace the pins with chalk and then sew along where you chalk, but just as far down as the bottom of your hips. Then you're gonna wanna flip it outside again and just freehand some straight lines for the rest of your skirt or use a ruler. Pro tip, fold it in half while cutting so that you can ensure both sides are even. So this skirt fits perfectly, so perfect that I wanna save the pattern of it. So I'm gonna lay it down on something and trace it. To make a pattern, you're going to need the piece that you wanna trace, a Sharpie and a hard flat surface. Lay the garment out, take the marker, and just trace the garment. I know what you're thinking, don't worry, these are not brand new floors. My house is like super old. Once you've traced your permanent skirt pattern onto the ground, move the garment and clean up the lines. If you have very textured wood grain, it can look a little shaky. This will save me a lot of trouble in the future. And now for the dreaded top half of the dress. I was desperately confused about how to do this and I didn't want to make it at all, so I don't know why I designed it in the first place. I guess because part of me thought that my followers would see it and recognize how difficult it would be and then vote against it for my sake, but I guess I just overestimated my uh, persuasive powers. Okay, I promise this is still the same day, but I just changed my shirt because I need something that's easier to get on and off. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is from Thrive. After concluding that the mock-up fit pretty well, I traced it onto some pattern paper that I remembered I had a ton of. After cutting the paper pieces out, I got distracted because it seemed like Darian was trying really hard to tell me something. I don't understand. What? Now I had a conundrum. I needed a fabric to line the top of my dress. So I pilfered through the bag of things that I was about to donate to a thrift store and found this skirt. And now, to avoid giving detailed instructions, allow me to shoot the breeze with you. Have you ever been to a prom? Did you enjoy it? I love prom. Now believe it or not, I was prom queen back in my day. But you could probably tell that, right? I think I give off a very prom queen vibe. Yes, I was homeschooled, but even so, you know, prom queen is more of a, a mindset. Look, the truth has no jurisdiction over my truth, Garion. And I did at least go to a few real proms. I somehow Jedi mind tricked some public and private schoolers into inviting me to theirs. And I am eternally grateful to them because those were great experiences, all five of them. Oh shoot, I missed the opportunity to explain any of this complicated stuff to you, drats. Well, now that the breeze is successfully shot, you're gonna take the strap that you made and loop it through the loop that you made. Now make a couple of miniature pancakes and shove them in between the two layers of your top. Take that skirt of yours and cut a gecko length slit in the back of it. This will be the new home for the zipper that you organ harvested from that donation skirt. Now we're just gonna tuck this into here and pin it where Hits. After you've completed that action, notice that the music is beginning to build, which can only mean another grand reveal is right around the corner. But first, we must bestow a sense of purpose onto those extra scraps of fabric. And what say you? We trace our arms and make some handless gloves. <laughs> yes, that'll do nicely. Now my final thoughts on this dress are that I'm actually kind of obsessed with it. If I ever enter a pageant, this is probably what I'll wear. I mean, the shine of the fabric is utterly dazzling, but it's actually kind of stretchy and very comfortable. Overall rating, nine out of 10. So that dress is officially done. Now I'm thinking about getting a crack on the next dress, but the priority is the fact that it's March 31st today, which means tomorrow is, you guessed it, Spray Dad in the Stomach, stomach day. day. Yes, every year on the evening of March 32nd, I put a rubber band around my dad's spray nozzle to celebrate April Fool's. This year would prove a little tricky though, considering I don't live with him anymore. So I had to sneak in stealthily in the middle of the night, like a stealthy little 
night wombat. Also, he always comes to my house in the morning, so I feel like I should prepare something here. I texted my dad before bed and said, hey, I have an orthodontist appointment. Can you wake me up in the morning? But apparently he never even saw my text. Joe, however, did come over and tried to wake me up. Oh, and I put a rubber band around my own spray nozzle too, just in case. Then I went to my appointment and apparently my dad came over while I was gone. The sprayer yeah. me all over my belly and I'm trying to figure out what to do. I didn't even think about just shutting the water off. <laughs> get that rubber band off quick. Then it came over here and of course it got me with the mannequin and he got me with the sprayer. <laughs> but that did not signal the end of festivities for my second favorite holiday. No, no, we went to my friend Courtney's place of employment where she cuts hair all day and I thought that must be boring. Let's treat her to a fun surprise. And she responded with the typical Courtney level of unabashed enthusiasm. So I just got off work, found all these balloons. Must be the hand of Makara because she's the only one that really cares to do April Fool stuff. Good job. It's time to begin dress number three, but we're not going to get the whole thing done in one day because tonight I'm going to support a friend's husband at an MMA fight. And of course, I had to spend a long time struggling with like, what do you wear to an MMA fight? This is what I came up with. I am starting to question it. It does give off a very 30 and flirty and thriving vibe until I smile and then it becomes ironic because I just look 13. Firstly, remove the sheet from your bed, then hold it up to yourself like so. Take note of where it hits, then freehand this general shape. If you're struggling to get it just right, stand on your head and repeat my name three times. In doing so, you will summon my disappointment because I don't believe in witchcraft. Cut a couple of gently tapering triangles off the bottom of your top. In show business, we jokingly call these darts. But in the professional seamstress world, they're called mini pizza slices. Now after pinning and holding the mock-up up to yourself several times and establishing that it fits well, trace it and cut it out on two layers of your fancy fabric. Sew up the mini pizza slices in each of those panels, then join the two panels together, right sides snuggling each other warmly like a couple of MMA men. Sew along the top and bottom, leaving the sides open through which you will pull the whole thing right side out. Speaking of MMA, we had a blast at the match. I think everyone in our party thoroughly enjoyed it. What with the aggressive cuddling and violent secret handshakes? Suffice to say, my dad had never seen anything quite like it before. Okay, I really, really, really need to get this dress done today, but first, I feel like I'm just not satisfied with the sketches I made not having faces. Now, this may or may not have been because I just wanted to try the photo animation filter. Anyway, this dress we're making now, though tedious and time-consuming, is actually not complicated. These things I'm cutting out right here are going to be turned inside out and used as big ties. That way, you won't have to mess around with buttons or zippers, and you can just tie the back in a bow. Okay, if you're a celebrity watching this, Met Gala idea. It's like kind of gloves, but more artistic. <laughs> High class. Really hard to do anything with, which shows prestige. You can't really do anything on your phone, so I had to press the record button with my nose, and I'm about to stop it with my nose. Now iron both of those tie backs down till they're flatter than my singing voice. Then pin them to the front of your top, wrong sides facing each other. That's right, wrong sides, shaking it up on you. Next, you're going to perform a French seam. And if you don't know what a French seam is, it's ask a French person. Now for the skirt, I wasn't sure exactly how much fabric to get. So I decided to play it safe and get one the size of like a big fish. Like, the fish that swallowed Jonah. Take all 10 yards of that luscious purple river and fold it down to a manageable size. Roll over it to ensure it doesn't float away, then cut off the bottom two feet. If your wrist gets too tired, stand on your head and say Grandpa JJ three times. He might show up and cut it for you with his frying pan sized hands. Now because this dress turned out so cute, I really want someone else to attempt to make it, so I'm gonna try to give actual instructions. The skirt will be comprised of three tiers. The bottom will be 10 yards by 24 inches, the middle will be five yards by 18 inches, and the top will be about two yards by, well, I guess that depends on your height, but I just looked it up and Zendaya, yes, you're the same height as me, so 12 inches for the top. If you're someone shorter watching this, we'll just wear whatever height high heels you have to to be 5'10". Then these numbers will work for you too. Now this fabric wasn't quite as stiff as I wanted it to be, so I decided to starch the whole dang thing. But if you don't starch yours, I won't call the police. However, I will call the police if you don't use double-sided hem tape all along the bottom. This will prevent you from having to sew a hem. I, however, accidentally put one-sided hem tape on it, so I still had to sew a 10-yard hem. If you're confused, so am I. Not sure what I was saying, but I accidentally recorded it in slow-mo, and even when I try to speed it up, it doesn't make sense. Take the raw edge of the top of your panel. Now pretend you're a Massachusetts pilgrim in 1692 and the raw edge is a witch. Now set your machine to the longest possible stitch, then sew all along that freshly burned edge. Then pull on one end of the string till it gathers like so. Ideally, you do this with one long continuous seam, but with 10 yards of fabric, the thread will probably snap, so I did mine in sections. Gather the first panel till it lines up with the length of the second panel. Then sew and pin the bottom panel to the second panel, and sew a long wide stitch across the top of the second panel. Join that to the third panel, then gather the third panel till it fits inside the waistband. But before doing all that I had to cut out the tears, starch, and iron every inch of them. Well, bad news, I can't really go any farther because I'm out of starch. JJ, what is that you brought with you? Starch. What are the odds? Wow, Did I mention this was 10 whole dang yards of fabric? It, it was a lot. 10 is a 
Big number. Do you remember when you turned 10? You probably felt pretty old. And with all that fabric, I'm sure I know the question that is lingering on your mind, and that is the price. I do regret to inform you that it is one of the more expensive dresses I've ever made. Coming in at a whopping $29.99. I know, but trust me, it was worth it. And if you feel like splurging, I'll link the fabric below. So I'm gonna actually make the skirt part matte instead of shiny. Not because I made a huge mistake and accidentally put the hem on the shiny side, but because of an artistic choice. And honestly, after seeing the final product, I'm glad I went with the matte side, and I think you should too. Like the shiny side kind of looks like a dollar store princess dress but the matte side looks like you'd eat caviar in it check it out you know at this point you can just kind of like wrap it around yourself call it a dress and now coming to you live from undisclosed location ohio it's the complaining show my back has not hurt this bad since i made the ariana grande granny's dress <laughs> oh no i just got a really good idea if i add tool to the inside to make it really puffy it'll be really pretty Oh, well, this is why I bought a hot tub, right? So I didn't end up adding the tool, but I did end up getting in the hot tub. Throw a few pleats in the top layer if you want, then either gather stitch the top, or if you're sick of doing that, cut a piece of elastic to the exact length of your waist, then stretch it out across the top of the skirt. Sew it in place, tugging as you go. Sorry, it was late at night when I filmed that. Oh wait, no, it was still daytime. Cut a strip of fabric that is as long as Abraham Lincoln and as wide as a skateboard. You're going to fold and iron it along here and here. Oh, it kind of looks like bacon. Once those edges are folded in, coax your skirt up to the waistband. Once the skirt has settled in and let its guard down, the mighty jaws of the waistband shall clamp down upon it, and there it shall remain till the dusk of eternity. Wait, no, okay, it's definitely nighttime there. I am so confused about the sequence of events here. This was literally filmed like three days ago, but I already remember not one single part of this. I think the storage space in my brain has reached its capacity. Ugh, sorry I enunciate things so poorly now. Do you guys remember back before I had braces when I would talk so clearly that people would accuse me of being a robot? Those were the stinking days. Now sew the back almost all the way shut, but leave the top few inches open. That way you can fit your caboose through it, then tie it shut. What now? I thought I was done. What am I? Oh, straps for the top. Well, I broke my last needle and it is like 12.47 a.m. So all the stores are closed. This is as much as I got done that night. And then the next day I went to the store. Touche, Courtney. Too stinking. Why would she do this? It's like a stinking driving hazard. So I ran out of noodles, right? Needles, not noodles. So I go to Joanne's to get more machine needles. But as I'm holding the needles, I think, what if it's not the needles that are the problem, but the machine? And I thought, well, I could go home and test these needles and see if they work, but what if they break because my machine's broken? I don't want to have to make another trip to the store. So I bought another machine, got home, tried the new needles, and sure enough, it was just the needles that were broken. This will come in handy someday. Iron your straps flat and sew them onto the back of your shirt first. Then try it on and let it be pinned wherever it so pleases in the front. Sew them in place and you're ready for your big event. So prom, get ready with me. Just look how majestic and flowy the skirt is as you run away. That's important in case you're a fickle bride who's prone to cold feet. Now the beauty of this dress having long ties in the back is its versatility. You can style it many different ways, including this, a strapless, no, too risky or dancing. Or you can pull the ties up over your shoulders, tie them in the back, and create the, this. Wear it with a green skirt and dye your hair red to be the little mermaid. And I cannot stress enough how vital it is that you wear this dress for a maternity shoot. In conclusion, I think I'll give this dress a 9.5 out of 10. It's incredibly comfortable and easily one of my top 5 favorite things I've ever made. Now real quick, and I do mean really quick i'm going to show you how to make one more dress because there were some people in my dms <coughs> that i wasn't going to be making something out of this green fabric so i will be making the design that got booted off earlier now i really want the bottom half of this dress to fit just like the gorgeous silver dress that we made but how am i going to mimic that skirt precisely Oh, would you look at that? My floor has a pattern on it. <laughs> Floors do the darndest things. Take a semi-translucent fabric and lay it over the marking you made on your floor. Trace the shape with scissors, then fold it in half and place it on the folded edge of your fancy fabric. Wow, science. Now find a suitable scrap of fabric and cut out two straps the length of a Komodo dragon's tongue. Now use your hand or a measuring tape to ascertain the size of your <coughs> and make triangles that size. These were the measurements I needed my triangles. At the bottom center of each triangle, draw a mini pizza slice. Cut four layers of these triangles, 
haphazardly try them on against yourself. Sew up the darts. Well, that's all the time we have for today. No, it's not. Now grab your triangles, two by two, and set them aside. Make some straps, and then, hold on, something tricky's about to happen. Lay a strap downward on the front side of one of your triangles, then lay another triangle over top of it. Sew along the sides and top, and... Okay, ready for this? It's nothing, and then just like magic. Now sew the front and back of your skirt together and flip down the top couple of inches. Now trim your skirt so that the front is a little shorter than the back. Stuff those triangles with some burnt pancakes, then shove them into the top of your skirt. Now smite them with the sword of your sewing machine. And finally cut a slit. Now you can wear it as a halter and just be done with it, or you can take the straps and sew them down in the back. Also, if you find you need more support, you can make two new straps and sew them there and there. And just like that, the dress is done. It only took about two hours. So without further ado, let's have a little grand reveal. Well, that's all the time we- Woman, I swear. It's me, your host, Mrs. Old Hollywood Woman. This is my old Hollywood hair and my kind of old Hollywood dress and this beauty mark you see right here. Well, it's a side effect of Hollywood-itis. And overall, I think I'd give this dress here a 6 out of 10. For a dress that took two hours to make, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Well, that's all the time we have for today, folks. Be sure to let me know which dress was your favorite and, of course, which breed of dog is your favorite. And while you're at it, don't forget to check out ThreadUp and use my discount code, Makara, for 30% off my discount code. <laughs>